What is up, you guys? This is your boy Andy Matrix. I talk about anime, manga, video games, geek culture, and Japanese culture. So, really quick, I'm gonna try to make this really quick because I already talked about Brandon Sanderson's Brandon Sanderson's um, multi-million-dollar back uh, Kickstarter project. I mean, he's basically said he's gonna release four novels, and only the people that sign up to his um, uh, to his Kickstarter will actually. I uh, get the chance to get all four freaking novels, right? And I think I think the other day, a couple of days ago, it was a 25 million. Now it's a 26 million. That's 112,000 backers. Holy smoke! And it has 22 days to still go. I mean, this is a success, right? But when you are a successful person of any kind in today's modern world, in today's modern world. Like back then people used to, people used to, you know, kind of like appreciate um, somebody who started from nothing to the top. Right. But nowadays, nowadays, if you have, if you have any, any amount of millions, if you have a million dollars, you know, people just want to destroy you. So Mr. Brandon Sanderson, Mr. Brandon Sanderson. Okay. I'm here at Bounding Into Comics, and they are saying that Brandon Sanderson Kickstarter success draws outrage, accusations of white privilege from fellow writers. In other words, fellow writers, other fantasy writers, and other 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 authors are saying that the reason why he's so successful is because he is white. <laughs> okay, okay. So so let's 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 um let's try this logic. Let's try this logic. If if somebody, right? If somebody like J.R.R. Tolkien starts a starts a Kickstarter, he's already popular. He's already popular. He wrote, um, he wrote the Game of Thrones series, right? A Song of Ice and Fire. So if he starts, if he starts a, a Kickstarter with all the fans that he has all over the world, don't you think he's pro he's probably gonna make more than than Brandon Sanderson? Probably gonna make hundreds of millions. Who knows? But the point is, it's absolutely crazy. Right. Right. And they are acting. They are acting as if an author, a writer of color, such as, gee, I don't know. Have you guys ever heard of Tommy Adeyemi? Right. Tommy Adeyemi. She is a Nigerian American novelist. She wrote she wrote a book called The Children of Blood and Bone. Children of Blood and Bone. If Kate, you know, for those people, for those people who've never who've never read who who are not who are not readers, right? A lot of you, you know how Hollywood is always saying, "Oh, how come there there aren't any any black characters in fantasy? How come there's no, you know, there's no uh, African fantasies out there?" Tommy Adeyemi, she wrote *Children of Blood and Bone*, which is an African epic fantasy, but you will never hear Hollywood talking about this because it's not part of their agenda, right? Tommy Adeyemi was given a million dollar. Uh, she sold the, the rights to the to the book for a million dollars. She's a millionaire. She is an author millionaire. You will not hear Hollywood talking about her because it's not it's not part of their agenda, right? They want to portray everything as if oh my god, other oh, you know it's, everything is the fault of white white people. It's white people's fault. At the same time, there's authors out there who write in the same genre who have a really good success. She's a millionaire. Tommy Adeyemi is a millionaire, right? But of course, because Brandon Sanderson is a white guy, and I'm telling you this as a Latino guy, they're blaming his success on the fact that he's white, despite of the fact that he built his career from finishing the Wheel of Time novels and publishing a whole bunch of his own novels. I mean, come on. Anyways, let's 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 see what was so, some of these haters have to say. Because it's his fellow authors. These are fellow authors in the, that, that, that he probably knows, that he probably met. They're talking smack about him, right? Right? So um, here's one. Senatania Natanya Baron. She's, uh, she's, I guess she's one of the writers. It says, um, Pilgrim, Pilgrim of the Sky author, Natanya Baron, open. She says, today is a really good day to support your favorite author who hasn't made $18 million in the last few days. All right, it says, 
Am I personally upset at Brandon Sanderson for making money? Uh, no, not at all. Truly good for him. What makes me frustrated is that gen, especially genre writers are told there's there's not a big market for fantasy. And you know what? There's a market for fantasy, but it's not as big as romance. When it comes to publishing, romance is the biggest genre because most of most of the readers out there, because women read more than men. This is this is a st statistics. This is a fact. That's why romance is one of the biggest you know, publishing genres, right? So Brandon Sanderson, he built his audience over time. So you know what? I don't think fantasy is, is uh, one of the biggest genres out there. I mean, next to science fiction, yeah, but Brandon Sanderson has been building his audience for years and years and years and years, guys. Come on. So I don't know what, I don't know how, how small, maybe, maybe Miss Natania Barron, she has a small brain that she, she just can't, you know, analyze this correctly, but hey, Here's another one of her comments. It says, but there are so many incredible science fiction and science fiction and fantasy writers, SFF writers out there. If you love fantasy and want to support the genre, I highly recommend reading more and more broadly. Start <laughs> start a pack to 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 blow your mind. And then he she basically points at other fantasy writers. Um, it says Dungeons Dungeons and Dragons contributor K Tempest Bradley asks. He said, this is from the. Uh, I guess a contributor for Dragon, Dungeons and Dragons said this runaway Brandon Sanderson Kickstarter is toast of the original story of Brandon Sanderson Percent's imprint wherein shines a spotlight by publishing authors, authors writing epic fantasy steeped in their own cultures, right? This was the plan the whole time, wasn't it? What? What the heck? It says getting... <laughs> Here's another author. This is from Tor. Tor is a fantasy and science fiction uh, publishing company. Okay. It says getting incre increasingly more irritated by the continued astronomical success of the, that Kickstarter. There is so much excellence, diverse science fiction and fantasy out there, and y'all are intent on giving giving a that man millions of dollars. Yes, yes, because he built it up. He's been building it for years. This is like it's it's a platform. See, the, see the thing about the thing about writers, and I know because I've written books. I, I've told you guys I have books published on Amazon, but I mean I have never had any huge success. The thing about artists, whether it's painters, writers, poets, is that they have such a poor mentality when it comes to business. And that is why there's the there's the quote, you know, the, the, the famous phrase, the starving artist, because of people think like this. Because they think, oh, it's wrong. It's absolutely wrong and bad to make millions of dollars. If that is true, then maybe J.K. Rowling is a bad person for making billions off of Harry Potter. Let's continue. And then the same person, this is from Tor. This lady, he's, she's from Tor. She's a book critic, right? She goes on to say, and then here in one body into comments says, noted a sci-fi author, John Scalzi, similarly chalked up Sanderson's success to his ex existence as a white male. <laughs> and there it is again. See? I mean, what did I tell you? It says, in the, I highlighted this area here. It says, before anyone else mentions it, yes, indeed, Brandon also benefits from operating on the lowest difficult setting of life here in the U.S. And it's entirely possible some opportunities were open to him as a straight white male that weren't open to others. What? In other words, he's saying, oh, because he lives, he lives in the West in America and he's a white male, he's more likely to succeed. If you live in America, yes, your chances of being successful in life in life are actually higher than most people around the world. That is very true. Maybe you should be thankful for living in America that you have so many opportunities. I mean, I don't know what else to say, except it seems to me people just can't get it around their heads that in today's modern world, they, you know, they associate, they associate being white with success when really Brandon Sanderson has written, I mean, again, I, I've never read any of his books, but I, I, have, I have followed, I read about, you know, his, his success. He wrote the Wheel of Time series, which is one of the best uh, fantasies, epic fantasies ever written next to, next to Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. He finished the series after the original author died. So that's how he built his name up. He built his name off of that. And then after that, and just like anything, just like anything, you start, you start small and then you grow and then you become successful, right? Just like anything in life. 
but but they are blaming okay they, they are they are accusing his success strictly out of him being a white guy and by the way i keep saying this i am a spanish guy telling you this i am a spanish guy telling you this and I'm, i am not the most you know white vanilla person here but this is this is an idea that is being sold to a lot of people that the only way to to um to succeed in america is to be a white is to be white is to be caucasian therefore if you are latino black asian or arabian you have absolutely no chance in this in this country or li or little chances in this country that's what they're saying this is total freaking lie you see you have authors and like i told you before tommy adayemi a nigerian american author who wrote a novel an epic fantasy novel full of africans who who was in it was an absolute success it has thousands of reviews on amazon thousands and thousands of reviews on amazon but but they much rather they much rather stick to their narrative okay they much rather stick to their narrative of racism and white privilege that they absolutely ignore other successful quote unquote minorities they tell you oh you're a black person therefore it's hard for you to succeed in america oh really what about all the other successful black people in america such as oprah such as will smith you know the lawyers the the lawyers and business people that, that are that are of color they tell you oh you are an oppressed minority you are not it's a lie and i'm telling you this as a latino living in america it's a fucking lie i used to believe it and now i'm out of that shit okay so brandon sanderson i salute you and i've never read any of your books but you inspire me you inspire me and maybe one day i'll maybe one day i'll write an epic fantasy that will sell million, millions of copies who knows thank you for the inspiration my friend this is andy matrix thank you for guys for listening and don't forget to subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell and i'll see you in the next video this is andy matrix godspeed